We just do ground support uh, for houseless people in the city. So we're bringing them like supplies, like basic supplies that they need to survive. Now on KGW News, a weekend heat wave in a pandemic. Volunteers hit the streets to help some of the most vulnerable in our community. Then a standoff in a popular park. An alleged armed burglar threatens people with a knife and barricades himself for hours. The latest on the tense situation. Plus, Rip City, we're playoff bound. Highlights from the Blazers down to the wire win over the Grizzlies. Your news starts right now. This is a KGW News Special Edition. And we begin tonight with that sizzling forecast. The Portland metro area is in for possible record-breaking heat, with high temps forecasted to reach the triple digits. The hot weather is also causing concerns over wildfire danger as a fire burns near Mosier and a new fire breaks out today near Bend. So let's get straight to Chris McGinnis now. He's tracking the weather from his home studio. Chris, just how hot did we get today? Uh, 99 in Portland, officially Ooh. at PDX late this afternoon in the 5 o'clock hour. And Brittany, that's just one degree shy of the record 100. Tomorrow's record 102. And again, I think we're going to be back close to that territory. A live look right now from our Wells Fargo Sky cameras. The sun sets. It's a little hazy out there. There is some... Uh, possibly some some high clouds and uh, maybe a little smoky haze actually coming up from a wildfire burning in northern California. I'll show that imagery to you coming up in just a little bit. We have fallen six degrees in the last hour. Did you notice it? It's a whole lot cooler now at 91, right? Not really. It is very, very warm in the Portland metro area and across the area. Again, officially 99 in Portland. The Century Club today, Scappoose, Hillsboro, McMinnville, Aurora, one better at 101. And check out the amount of real estate the triple-digit heat is taking up across the state of Oregon, from Pendleton to Rome to Medford and Roseburg at 108, and even the beach today, Florence and Tillamook, both popping out in the 90s. The excessive heat warning continues for the Wyoming Valley, parts of the gorge through tomorrow. Uh, heat advisories continue through the Coast Range and the Cascade Foothills through tomorrow. And another important thing, Brittany, with a very dry conditions, very relatively, a very low relative humidity and the high heat, the fire danger remains very high. Everybody, everybody shaded in this bright magenta uh, color under a red flag warning for potentially explosive fire start situation uh, along and west of the Cascades through tomorrow. More on that coming up in just a bit. All right, thanks so much, Chris. Well, those rising temperatures can be a major problem for Portland's most vulnerable, and that includes the houseless community. As KGW's Mike Benner shows us, volunteers spent the entire day making sure those in need were taken care of. Out of work since mid-March, Brianna Bonham should be looking for assistance for herself, but instead she's offering it. Mutual aid and helping each other is so important. With temperatures expected to reach triple digits this weekend, Bonham is gathering supplies to distribute to Portland's houseless community. I think sometimes it's so easy for people to like walk past them and just like ignore them and like they're, they're human beings, they're our neighbors, they're citizens of Portland, Oregon. May I borrow one of these? Among those joining Bonham on this mission to help the houseless beat the heat, Pastor Mike Whipple. This is critical. This is critical to me, my heart, my faith, my ministry, my God, and the city I love the most, Portland. Water, hygiene kits, and cooling towels are just some of the supplies volunteers will be handing out this weekend. All of this made possible by the Joint Office of Homeless Services. What we've heard that folks are pretty grateful that the supplies are coming out to them. You know, I think, you know, it's never ideal to be, you know, camping anywhere any time of the year. I mean, folks would always prefer to, to have a place to be that wasn't a campsite or somewhere else. But the reality of the situation is many people find themselves living on the streets. A tough task made even tougher when the weather heats up. I don't mind the heat, like personally, I don't mind being out here during the day helping people. Fortunately, there are people like Brianna Bonham and others willing to help some of Portland's most vulnerable. It's really important that people like get out there on the ground and make connections with people. We keep each other safe. Hats off to those volunteers doing this work. It is so very important. Remember that in years past, during heat waves, the houseless community could find relief in cooling shelters. But right now, those places aren't open because of the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm Mike Benner for KGW News.
Well, residents near Bend are under evacuation orders after a new wildfire broke out today. These are photo photos from the Deschutes County Sheriff's Office. Deputies say a level three go now evacuation notice is in effect for people living north of Cooley Road and east of Highway 97. Deputies also say three mobile parks have been evacuated. Right now, Highway 97 is closed between Cooley Road and Deschutes Junction. And we're continuing to follow the wildfire burning near Mosier in the Columbia River Gorge. It's grown slightly to 985 acres and it's just 30% contained. Crews spent Thursday building lines around this fire. Planes and helicopters also flew in for water drops. The Oregon Department of Forestry says it has destroyed 31 buildings. About 564 homes are under an evacuation notice. Volunteers with the Red Cross are delivering food and supplies to those impacted. Officials do say that this fire is human caused. And we are always updating information on the wildfire in Mosier on KGW.com. And if you want that information sent straight to your phone, we can do that for you. Just text the word wildfires, that number there on your screen, 503-226-5088, and we'll send you a link. You can also text your photos and videos of the fire to that number as well. Now to a developing situation in Portland's Forest Park. A man threatening hikers with a knife has barricaded himself in a standoff with police after an attempted burglary. Police are communicating with the man who they say is armed in crisis and threatening both officers and the public. Police say just before seven this morning, someone tried to break into a home in the 2800 block of Northwest Thurman Street. A short time later, calls came in that a man was holding two knives, threatening hikers with a knife on the south end of Forest Park. Portland police believe the suspect is involved in other reports of a man threatening people with knives. Northwest Cornell Road remains closed. Travelers are ex uh, asked excuse me, to use a different route. And we will continue to update you on this situation here on air and online at KGW.com. Well, we have an update now on our local COVID-19 cases. Oregon reports 412 new cases and one more death. This brings the number of total infections across the state to more than 23,000. And in case you missed it, yesterday, Governor Kate Brown announced new face covering guidelines for businesses. Employees working in private office spaces must wear face coverings in hallways, bathrooms, elevators, lobbies, and break rooms unless social distancing can be maintained. Well, hey, the Portland Trailblazers still have life in this strange NBA season. They managed to pull off another dramatic victory in the bubble. The Blazers beat the Memphis Grizzlies in today's play-in game for the right to battle the Los Angeles Lakers in the first round of the playoffs. Art Edwards has a look at how it all unfolded. Before the game even started, the Portland Trailblazers were making headlines. Damian Lillard named the NBA player of the seeding games. And then, about 90 minutes before game time, Yusuf Nurkic revealed on Instagram that his grandmother had passed away. He previously said she had COVID-19 and was in a coma. Um, I already came, did all those decisions to stay here and, and be with the team, so might as well think she wanted me to play. Nurkic came through big time, crashing the boards and even hitting a couple of three-pointers. Good, Yusuf Nurkic from downtown. He had 22 points, 21 rebounds for the game. I think he was he was amazing. You know, I think that was a special performance by him to be dealing with uh, his grandmother passing and uh, to be able to come out there and, and have that type of effort and to be that uh, focused on the basketball game when he has something so much more important on his mind and on his heart. Um, I think that just uh, speaks uh, volumes of his character. The Blazers took a six point lead at the half. Damian Lillard tried to keep the Blazers ahead in the third. A brilliant drive and dunk, but Memphis rallied. John ja Morant led the charge, and the Grizzlies took a 94-89 lead into the fourth quarter. But the Blazers never quit. C.J. McCollum playing with a fracture in his back brought the Blazers back. And then Carmelo Anthony sealed the deal for Portland with a three-pointer off the assist from Lillard. Smiles all around for the Blazers as they win it 126-122. The Lakers are ahead for the Blazers in the first round of the playoffs. We didn't fight uh, as hard as we fought in the bubble to just say, all right, we the eight seed and go out here and just get beat up on. Uh, we feel like we have, a, we have a chance in the series against anybody in this league. Uh, we feel like we got a chance in this series, and that's how we go approach it. 
The first game of the series is set for Tuesday. Tip-off is at 6 p.m. This is the seventh year in a row that the Blazers have been able to make it into the postseason. They're looking to continue to make noise in the bubble. Art Edwards, KGW Sports.